He'll curse you to your face. He'll deny. He'll curse you. It's the only reason he's serving you because of what you've done for him, how you blessed him. He don't serve you for, for not, for no reason. Take the stuff you took, take the stuff he got. He'll curse you. So when I look at my text and I bring up Peter, this is nothing new. Satan comes and wants, but there's something a little different about this with Peter. The thing that's different about it is that Job was perfect. The Bible says he was a perfect man in his generation. How many of you know Peter was more Peter was sure not perfect. He says, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion, seeking whom he what? May devour. Which says that I believe the reason he really wanted Peter was because he saw something in Peter that he knew he could overtake. As a matter of fact, he saw a weakness in Peter. He saw something in Peter that he knew that if I can just get my hand on him, get him in the right situation, in the right place, and in the right time, I can have him. So he saw the impetuous nature of Peter and saw Peter was so impulsive and he recognized that that one part was good, but another part was bad. He was so impulsive, he suffered to say the wrong thing out of his mouth at any time. A look into Peter's life will give us a clear view of the truth of that statement. Look at Peter's beginning. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5, verse 8, one of the visuals about Peter was when Jesus first called Peter into the kingdom. First called him to use him as a servant. You remember when Jesus was getting his disciples together, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 5, Jesus was out and he wanted to carry a gospel, speak a, a gospel message, and he went and he found these fishermen in a boat. And uh, it was Peter, and uh, he asked Peter to take the boat and just move a little ways down from the water. And uh, he wanted to use his, uh, his ship for his ship for uh, a pulpit and Peter did just what he said then when he got to using it he told them to uh, do you have any fish and he says to him master we've toured all night and we have nothing and uh, Jesus told him to go out just a little ways from the shore and drop your net in the water Peter did just what Jesus told him after doing it he caught a great drought of fish, had so much that the boat began to sink, the net broke, and Peter looked back at Jesus and it humbled him so much that he told the Lord in five and eight, he said, depart from me because Lord, I am a sinful man. Clearly, Peter openly said to the Lord, look at me, I'm too dirty for you to be around me. It blew his mind that one word from Jesus could cause that many fish to come to him. That he felt that I'm not worthy to be around you. You are too awesome for me. You're too great for me. I don't deserve to even be in your presence. And he spoke that to the Lord. The Lord looked at him and told him, don't worry about that. Now, no other of the fishermen who were with Peter even said a thing like that. James was there, John was there, and Andrew was there. And neither one of the fishermen ever said what Peter said impetuously. Remember again, the impulsiveness of Peter to wear his feelings on his sleeve, to say to the Lord, depart from me. The other disciples didn't say a thing. Peter maybe was kind of like a spokesman for them. 
and that probably makes a little sense because if you ever hung around some guys I've hung around some people and when you hang around some of your friends everybody in the group is not the outward speaking one Generally, sometimes it's one in the group that will speak almost for everybody. And when he speak, even though everybody might not go along with it, they let him do all the talking. So I believe that was kind of the relationship that Peter had with them. But let me tell you, while I'm talking about Peter, Peter is not the only flawed person in the Bible. But we ain't gonna talk about the rest of the flawed persons because if this is gonna do us any good, we need to look at the flaws in us. How many of you in the house of God tonight that can admit that though you serve God with all your heart, you can see flaws in your own life. When you can recognize the flaws of of your life that's the part that you gotta focus on that's your vulnerable spot that's the spot where the enemy is going to launch his attack against you when he said to Peter to, to the Lord he said he wanted Peter the Bible says he said I want Simon he asked for Peter and the reason he's asking for him because he's trying to stop him some of you in here tonight I know you don't know this but the same devil that was after Peter is after you but he ain't after you like he was after Peter he's after you because he knows what God has done in your life he knows that if he don't try to stop you God is going to get glory out of your life he sees that God has potential in your life just like he saw the potential that was in Peter and if you are in a spiritual battle right now it's not because you are nobody it's because you are somebody the devil don't want nothing but something that God can you and you in here tonight and if you know that the enemy is trying to pull you away from God it's because God got a plan for your life I want you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor there's a plan for you I like what the Bible said in the book of Jeremiah where the Bible said I know the thoughts that I think concerning you thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end I want to tell somebody in here tonight that may be in a struggle the reason you're struggling is because the devil is trying to stop you but I got news for him tonight that there may be permission granted for him to come against you but it is a conditional permission God did not give him full permission to destroy you for the Bible said the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but when it came to destroying you God said you can't destroy him he said I let you touch him I let you get close to him but when it's all over I'm going to bring him out all right oh brothers and sisters give me a little bass on this what I'm going to tell you tonight that God is saying to us that Satan got a bag of tricks he got for us when he said he wanted Peter he was saying if I could just get the tricks on him that I got Satan got a bag of tricks that he likes to put on all of us and he was going to put them on Peter as soon as Peter fell look at Peter when Peter fell when he fell that's when Satan began to put his tricks on him